back to my little English page. So we're back on lives after my little marathon next week. If you don't know, and you should really, next week I did a live marathon. I went live every single day from Monday to Sunday and it was all the time it was always I think at 4 p.m. And during each, each and every day, we covered a very different topic every time with the idea of, um, you know, giving you the tools and the confidence um, to really, you know, make a difference to your learning journey by the end of that week. A lot of you came, a lot of you participated. I really want to thank you guys for that. That was really, really fun. And all of the energy that you give me, guys, is what allows me to be so energetic in my own lives as well, of course. So um, I see that the comments are a bit delayed. So I'm just going to wait a little bit and see where the comments arrive. Hello, Benan. Nice to meet you. How are you? Are you ready to have some fun today? Today's lesson should be really fun. We're going to focus on some mistakes that I found online, particularly mistake found on signs. You can see a lot of them, really. I've chosen a few. I think I've chosen six or seven. And we're going to have a look at those mistakes and try to learn from them. Then I also have, so that was, oops, sorry, let me put it here. So spelling mistakes on signs. That is the first thing that we're going to do today. The second thing is we're going to have a look at some riddles. Riddles can be quite challenging, but I think they're quite fun. And if you're able to answer, um, you know, find the answer of the riddle, it usually means you have quite a good level of English. So let's see how you guys do with that. And for the last one, we're going to have a look at illustrated jokes. So I have little pictures, little drawings that include a joke. And we're going to have a look at that and see why it's funny because of course uh, to be fluent in English doesn't mean that you just uh, speak about everything it also means that you understand things but not just because of listening because of what they actually mean so play on words for example that's definitely something you need to be able to understand um, if you want to be fluent okay um, thank you Benam I'm great I'm great it's really hot right now I have the big light on. I say that every live, I think. But I have the big light on, the big window. I've cracked the window open a little bit to get a, a bit of airflow, but I don't know if it's helping much. <laughs> so we will see. Awesome, guys. So should we move, <clears throat> excuse me, should we move on to our first category? I think we should. So like I said, our first category is spelling mistakes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the photo and I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think and tell me in the comment section what the mistake is. Well, sometimes it's the mistakes because there might be more than one mistake, okay? Some of those signs, I'm not sure they're really real. They might have been, you know, tempered with. But um, I still think it's fun and it's a good idea to, um, to have a look at them because we can still learn from them. Before we start, guys, please make sure that you like the video. That would show you a lot of support and I would really, really appreciate. And when we finish the video, don't hesitate to share it with as many people as possible. Let's try to reach a bunch of learners. Because remember, the more we are doing the lives, the more fun we have. Also, guys, please, 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 please comment in the comment section during the activities. This is what makes it fun that I can interact with you. So don't feel shy. Don't feel embarrassed. We accept all mistakes here. So please comment in the comment section. Okay. Are you ready for the first photo? Hey, Red Brandy Cherries. Nice to see you. I was wondering if you were going to come. How are you? I love seeing some of you guys come back week after week after week. It really allows me to create a relationship with you. And again, that's part of why the lessons are more fun because you get to know me and I get to know you as well. Okay, so like I said, the first one today is going to be this one. That's the one that I shared on social media. I shared this photo on Instagram asking you guys to tell me what the problem is. There is a big problem in this photo. There is a very very big photo <laughs> problem in here. So 
Go ahead, think about it, and let me know what word is incorrect. And if you know what the correct answer is, how to correct it. <laughs> so, what do you think? Any ideas, guys? Shoplifters will be prostituted. Shoplifters will be prostituted. That's quite a harsh punishment, I think. It's very, very harsh punishment. Do you really think we should prostitute shoplifters? To prostitute them? I think there might be a problem with that word, don't you think? What could that problem be? So, you are saying prostitute? Nope. It's actually the wrong word. We need to change the word. To prostitute someone means that you are s you're making them sell their body in exchange for money. That's not the right word in this case. Arrested, yes, that works, but there's a more common word that you see on signs like this. It basically means arrested, pretty much, but it's a different word we're looking for, red brandy cherries. Similar, well, not similar, but in meaning it's not too far. Punished, still not the word we're looking for. It starts with a P though, so that's a good sign. It starts with a letter P. Hello, Saya YouTube, nice to meet you. Welcome to our live, we're trying to correct signs. So what's wrong here, guys? Do you know? Should I give you the answer? So it's not prostituted, it's not arrested, it is not punished, it is not caught either, no. It is going to be prosecuted prosecuted so can you hear how similar it sounds to prostituted the the um, the rhythm of the word is similar it starts similar it ends similarly as well and that's why it's often confused but prosecuted not prostituted prostituted <laughs> okay exactly mark in which shop would they prostitute shoplifters that is a very harsh punishment i agree <laughs> absolutely okay guys well done let's move on to our next mistake let's see so hop now hiring smiling feces <laughs> sorry it's really funny <laughs> now hiring smiling feces <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to tell you just yet why it's making me laugh so much, but this one is really funny, guys. What word is spelled incorrectly? And it is just one letter that is incorrect. So say, yeah, my name is Marine. Marine. M-A-R-N-E. A lot of people think it's Marie or Maureen, but it's Marine. Kind of like the Marines, but you remove the S. So guys, now hiring smiling feces. Is it really feces? Yes, guys, good job. Feces is wrong. What do feces mean? Do you know? Any idea? It means poop. Poop or poo if you're saying it with a British accent. Feces is more, it's, it's more of a... Um, Maybe scientific word or more formal word to refer to poo or poop. So obviously smiling poop is not what McDonald's is hiring for, okay? They are looking for smiling faces. Faces. This was the word, okay? Not smiling poos. No, 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 no. That doesn't work. <laughs> okay, good. So... Marine, let me just write it again, like like the Marines, the army, like this. Okay, guys, oh, sorry, I have a, a very watery eye, I think it's the, the makeup. Okay, good, should we move on to the next one? No more smiling feces? No. Okay, my next one is, I think it's fairly self-explanatory, but I thought it was quite cute. Um, so this item is reduced to the due to the misspelling of the word bird. Thank you. So obviously they wrote bread, bread. That's quite bad. And I think one dollar nineteen for something that says bread, bread, 
bread? It's still pretty expensive, don't you think? Would you buy it like that? Probably not, I don't think so. So yes, exactly the word we need is obviously bird, bird. That was an easy one, you already had the answer right here, but I thought it was a cool one, so I still wanted to show you. Gosh, my eye keeps crying, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> okay, so next, oh, let me remove the previous one. Next mistake, illegally ca uh, parked cars will be fine. Illegally parked cars will be fine. What's wrong here? Is there a problem? It sounds right, yeah? Illegally parked, it's hard to say. Illegally parked cars will be fine. It sounds right, yeah? But there is still a mistake. We're missing a letter somewhere. What letter could we possibly be missing? Do you know? If you do, comment it down below. <laughs> So what's the spelling mistake? Just so you know, it's towards the end. It's toward the end of the sign. What problem do we have here? Okay, so Benam, you're saying fine is wrong. Good. What's the problem with fine? What do we need to add for it to be correct? Do you know? Illegally parked cars will be fine. If we say that illegally parked cars will be fine, they're gonna be okay. There's no problem if it's fine. It's good, yeah? No problem. Okay. Um, so, f yes. Mm, can you tell me what's wrong with fine, Benam? Can you tell me? Illegally parked cars. What is the problem here? The problem is with fine. The problem is with fine. Okay. Because the double L at the beginning, double L after is correct. Illegal, it starts with an L and we add ill, so we have double at the end. And legal ends with an L, so we add li after, so that's why we have two L's at the end as well. So that's correct. The problem here is with fine, guys. But what's wrong? If I say that something is fine, it's perfect, right? But if the car is parked illegally, it shouldn't be fine. There is, they should receive a ticket, right? A ticket. So what's a synonym of ticket? A fine, sure. But we can also use fine as a verb. And as you can see, it says will be and then fine, which means this is a passive structure. So what do we need? We need to add ed to fine. Well, in this case, just D. So illegally parked cars will be fined. Okay, they will receive a fine. They will receive a ticket. Okay, so this one, this one was tricky because it sounds similar. Fine, find. It's very similar, which is why it's so, such a common mistake. You see that quite often on signs, to be honest. Okay, good. Next one. So let's remove this photo and let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is an interesting one. I like this one. Welcome tourist, we speak English. Just so you know guys, there's a lot more than one mistake on this particular sign. So let's see who can give me all of the answers first. All of the corrections. All right, so come on guys, I see we're quite a few watching. Don't be shy, comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think, come on, you can do it. <laughs> It's getting really hot in here. Do I have anything to kind of fan? Do I have anything? I have an envelope. Let's use this. Oh, okay. So while you guys think, I'll just fan my face for a bit because it's too hot. <laughs> so what do you think? Come on, guys. You can correct this one. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. I know you can do it. So look at the just the very first word. Okay, so Benam, you've corrected a, okay quite a few things. Good. Just want to give somebody else the opportunity to answer as well. So do you agree with Benam's corrections? What do you think? So Benam corrected welcome tourist speak and English. Okay? What about you guys? 
What about you guys? Okay, Rosemary, welcome tourists. We speak English very good as well. So yeah, YouTube, um, so um, I'm my little English page everywhere, but if you have more questions that are not fully related to this, can you just wait a little bit until the end of the lesson? Thank you. So yes, Rosemary, that was very good as well. Okay, so the first mistake was obviously welcome. You have an E at the end of welcome. Good. Then the next problem was tourist. It was misspelled as well. Um, so first of all, welcome uh, tourist. We should have OU for tourist. And in this case, we're talking to all tourists. So we should use a plural. Welcome tourists. Ah, I see you guys didn't notice that. Yeah, Mark Kelly, you put it there. Good. We should use tourists in plural because we're talking in general. So we go for plural words. Good. Then the next one, you guys got it all. It is speak, to speak, okay? It's spelled E-A, not I. That would be speak, spike, speak, speak. I think it would be speak. <laughs> and you want speak, obviously. So E-A to write this word. But you, you know this one. I think, yeah, you know this one. Good. And obviously, the last one is English. We write it with an E at the beginning, okay? All right. Wonderful. Next one. This one was a challenging one. There was a lot to, co to correct on this one. Okay. All right. So this one, guys, that's, that's a tough one. It's it's a tattoo, so it's inked on that person. It's in their skin forever. And there's a spelling mistake. That's embarrassing. That is really embarrassing. Uh, have you ever seen someone with a tattoo that was misspelled? I actually know someone that has a, a spelling problem. It was something written in French and they had placed the negative wrong or the apostrophe wrong. I can't remember quite exactly. And, uh, and on top of that, the person was French. So, so that's a little bit embarrassing, I think. If you're going to get a tattoo, guys, with, with words, with letters, make sure that you get it checked before, because, um, yeah, this, this is there forever, and it's literally displaying your mistakes to the, for the world to see. So that's a problem. Okay, yes, of course, guys. So too school, too cool for school. School obviously needs C S C H. So that person who got this tattoo was definitely not too cool for school. They should have gone to school because if you don't know how to spell such a basic word, I think that's fairly problematic. Just a little bit, a little bit problematic. Just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so hello Shokat, nice to meet you. I see you're, you started commenting, so good job. Good job on commenting. Well done, guys. Okay, so I think I have two more. Um, the next one. So let's remove the too cool for school tattoo because that one is bad. <laughs> okay, next one. Quite please, exams in progress. This particular mistake is something that I see all the time in writings. I'm sorry, it's a bit loud outside. It's something that I see all the time in students writing. There's a word in this that you guys confuse with another one because they look and sound similar, but they are not the same. So what's the problem here? You know what the worst is? This is a university sign. I don't know if you guys can see, but in the, the corner right here, it says something university. So it's a university that put that sign up and the university made a spelling mistake. I think, again, this is quite an embarrassing mistake, but we're not laughing at anybody, aren't we? <laughs> okay, good job. Okay, so Rosemary, you're saying quiet. Benam, you're also saying quiet. Okay, very good, guys. <clears throat> that was indeed the correct answer. Ooh, really hot in here. In this sign, it says quite, okay, which is pretty much close, similar to fairly. Um, and quiet, right here, this means not silent, but not loud, okay? So quiet, please. Don't make a lot of noise. Be quiet, be silent. Good. And the last one is another tattoo regret kind of story because oh sorry it literally says no regrets 
No regrets, guys. I have no regrets in life. So what's the problem here? What is misspelled? So first of all, it's fairly difficult to read, I think. That font is a bit challenging to read. But that's just my personal opinion. We're not here to judge that. We're just here to have a look at the mistake. So what's wrong here with no regrets? Again, it's a spelling mistake. What can you do to make it right? So we have to rearrange some letters in that word for it to be correct. So which letters would you change around? What do you think, guys? I'm reopening the window because I'm roasting. Okay, Benam, red brandy cherries. Hello, Kader. No, those are not my tattoos, Mark. No, no, no. I just found them online. I, no, I would not. I have no tattoos, to be honest. I like tattoos, but I don't have any tattoos. Um, so, yeah. Regrets, guys. Very good. It is spelled like this. Regrets, not regrets. Regret regret sounds like regurgitate. Re regurgitate. It's it's not the right word. Okay, regret, regret, no regret. Okay, very good, guys. So we're going to move on to our new category, which is riddles. So this is going to be a lot more challenging. Riddles are difficult. Riddles, most of them are fairly advanced because they. They only work because it plays on words. They play on words, on the different meanings that a word might have or how it's used in, in the different ways it could be used. So for this exercise, really, you need to be able to um, use synonyms and antonyms, well, mostly synonyms very well, or understand you know, what a word really means, all of the things it can mean. So guys, like I said, this is going to be challenging, but don't worry, we will explain and then you'll understand why this riddle works, okay? So let's get started with the first one. The first one, guys, is a riddle that I have done several times in the past. So if you, if you follow my lives, if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you will have seen this one or a slightly different version of this one but I love it. It's such a fun one. So, oh, I forgot one part of the riddle. Let's just say at the end it's supposed to be, what is it? But I can't enter. Oh, uh, what is going on? Let's just put a question mark here. Okay, we're just figuring out what it is. Okay. What is greater than God, more evil than the devil? The poor have it, the rich, the rich need it. What could that be? What, what is greater than God? Is there anything worse than evil? And what do poor people have? What would rich people need? When you're rich, you have everything, right? So what do you think? I've, I've hinted a few times, guys, I've used two or three words that should help you out uh, when, when I talked about the riddle. So think about what I said, okay? Is there anything bigger, uh, greater than God? Is there anything worse than the devil? Uh, what is something that the poor have? Or what, what would the rich need anything? So did you hear the words I used? So what do you think? Ha! What do you think, guys? Riddles are challenging, but I love riddles. I think they're so fun. So, Benam, you're thinking money. So, money is greater than God or worse than the devil? Uh, and poor people have money? No, poor people don't have money. Doesn't work. <laughs> I know, it's a difficult one, don't worry. But thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. Anybody else? Do you have a guess? Anybody else, guys? No? Okay, I'll give it to you. The answer, the answer, the answer is, the answer is nothing. Nothing is greater than God. Nothing is more evil than the devil. For the poor have nothing and the rich need nothing because they already have everything. Ha ha. So see, 
Do you understand how riddles work? They play on word, okay? The rich need peace. So yeah, that would be good probably, to, uh, Kader. Now be careful, peace is with a C, or is it this way for you guys? With a C, okay? Peace. Good. Let's move on to the next one. So, duck, duck. This one is probably the most difficult one of the lot, I think, because it also requires advanced vocabulary. So, who makes it has no need of it. Who buys it has no use for it. Who uses it can never see nor feel it. What is it? Okay, so... It's something that the person who makes it doesn't use it. Okay, the person who buys something is not going to use it. And then the person who, who uses it is never going to touch it or feel it. Hmm, that's a very difficult one. To be honest, when I, I, I did this one, this is, some, uh, this is a riddle that some students actually told me about in the past. Um, I couldn't find the answer. I thought it was too difficult. So think about how to help you without giving it away. That's a difficult one. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'll just describe the item a little bit. Just so you know, it's a type of, so it's an object that is usually made of wood and that is hollow. Hollow, if it's hollow, it means that it's empty. So something that is made of wood and that is empty, hollow, because you put something in it. So what could that one be? This one's really challenging. Any ideas, guys? No? Okay, so I'll give you the answer. It is a coffin. Do you know what a coffin is? It is the wooden box in which we put people when they're dead, and then we bury them in the ground, but that wooden box is called a coffin. A coffin. Obviously, the person who makes it doesn't need it. They're not going to go inside it. Uh, the person who buys it doesn't usually buy it for themselves. They usually buy it for someone else who died. Um, and the person who goes inside it is dead, so they don't see it or they don't feel it either. Okay? Good. Hello, Nishan. Nice to see you. All right. So I told you guys this one was going to be a difficult one. It is a very challenging one. Okay, this one might be a little bit easier. I am tall when I am young and I am short when, I'm, when I am old. So instead of young and old, try to think of other words. So young, when are you young? You're young at the beginning of your life, right? Uh, so when you start something and you're old towards the end. So think of an object that starts big and ends being small, ends up being small. What could it be? We don't use those as much as in the past. They used to be extremely common. Every single household had those because um, I can't say, I can't give you the answer. But know that they used to be very, very common items and they're not as common anymore. Nowadays, we use those objects more for decoration or ambiance for the mood in the room. <laughs> so what could it be? Mm -hmm. Ah, it's so hot, guys. Woo. Any idea? A pen. Oh, heavily. That is a really good option. That is not the one I had in mind, but that works very well. Okay, Th that could be a good answer. Good. Red brandy cherries. No, I know which riddle you're thinking of. It's the one about at the beginning of your life. And yeah, I think it's the Sphinx riddle, I think, in the mythology, in the Greek mythology. Um, but no, it's not that one. Pencil, you quite close heavily. That's not the one I had in mind. I was thinking about a candle, okay? When you have a, a candle, it's brand new, it's, it's, it's unused, it's tall. And the more you use it, the smaller it gets. So that worked, so that's why pencil worked, because you start with a long pencil and then you have to sharpen it the more you use it. 
and it reduces in size. So good job. That was good, Harley de Paula. I accept this one, no problem. Um, Rosemary T-shirt. Uh, nah, nah. I mean, I guess some clothes can shrink in the in the washing machine if you use the wrong setting. For that, that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I think I have one more riddle. Two more, two more. Okay. This one is a famous one. You might know the answer to this one. What has a head and a tail, but no body? What has a head and a tail, but no body? So think about other meanings of tail and head. In what other circumstances do you see those two words together? So we're obviously not talking about a person or an animal because they do have a body. So we need an object and that object should be described using words like head and tail. So what could it be? It's, to be honest, it's something that you probably touch every single day and that you probably carry with you at all times or most of the time. So what could that one be? Hmm. No ideas, guys? Yes, Nishan, very good. Very good. You said coin and that is correct, okay? A coin on one side has head and the other one has tail, okay? So when, uh, when people need to decide on something, when two parties need to decide on something, one side might choose head and the other one tail. You toss the coin and whatever side it lands on, that represents the winning side. So good job, a coin has a head and a tail. Well done. And then I have one more, so yeah, a coin. <laughs> and I have one more guys, but this one is very silly. I just found it funny. What kind of room has no doors or windows? So this is, again, not at all related to a house, okay? What kind of room has no doors or windows? How can I help you with this one? Think about, there's a, a cartoon called the Schmurfs. Do you know about the Schmurfs? They're little blue creatures that li live in the forest and they live in a very specific type of house, which is in a specific shape. That's the word you need. Hey, look, Khalid, nice to see you. So guys, again, this is a silly one. This is a very silly one, but I found it funny. So I thought I'll throw it in the lot. So what kind of room has no doors or windows? Benign nature. Oh, you know what, Nishan? That would have been a really good idea, except you do have windows in chat rooms. But you have the right idea of what you're supposed to be doing. This is the right idea. You're on the right path. Think of more words like that. Chat rooms just doesn't work because you can have several windows in a chat room. Uh, but you're, you're so close. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to think about it. What do you think? Another type of room. No, Kader, that doesn't work. Because you do have some doors sometimes in cemeteries. You have the gate and you have some, some crypts that do have doors as well. So this doesn't work. Grave doesn't work as well. Think about the word that Nishan said earlier. So the question was, what kind of room has no doors or windows and he said chat room so maybe you should try and copy what he's doing and use similar words what do you think i'm saying what do you think a lot <laughs> come on Ishan, you can do it come on you were so close okay i'll just give it away guys this was a very silly one don't get mad at me. A mushroom. <laughs> so obviously, guys, this is a stupid one, but I thought it was funny uh, because it, it has the word room. Okay, so 
So yeah, don't don't throw rocks at me for this very bad joke. I it's still funny. Say it's funny. <laughs> okay, guys, good job though. Um, that was very difficult. Like I said, um, riddles are very challenging because it, it's all about how words work together um, and how you how well you understand. Okay. All right. So yeah, Khalid. I know that this is this is stupid. I know. <laughs> Okay, so we're now going to move on to the last category. We're going to have a look at some drawings um, that, you know, have a little joke in them and we are going to analyze that and try to learn something from those little drawings. I think I have chosen four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I've chosen four. So um, hopefully they'll be useful and you'll enjoy them as well. Yes, Nishan, that was a joke. That was a very funny joke. A hilarious joke. <laughs> okay, guys. So, we're going to have a look at this one first. So, two donkeys are standing at a roadside. So, shall we cross? No way. Look at what happened to the zebra. So, what's the joke here? What's funny here? Huh? Okay, so I see some comments. What should we do to know about riddles? Um, red cherries, this, first of all, there's kind of a whole different way of thinking. So I would also look for some riddles in your own language that you understand more how riddles work. Um, and then instead of, you know, learning about riddles, I would analyze some riddles. Have a look, look for lists of riddles and analyze them. Look at the riddle, look at the answer and try to understand how that correlates. And then for example, like the coin, you would look for coin, head, face on, on, on Google, for example, and you would discover that, okay, so one side of the coin is head, one, coin of the, 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 one side of the coin is tail. So by actually analyzing the riddles, like what we just did, you get to improve and grow your vocabulary, okay? All right, so what do you think for this one, guys? Two donkeys are standing at the roadside. So, shall we cross? No way, look at what happened to the zebra. Okay, so what do you think? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Tell me what you think. What's so funny about this one? Because of course it's hilarious. So what, what, what's so funny here, guys? Why do they say, look at what happened to the zebra? Exactly, Nishan, very good. <clears throat> they thought the zebra smashed on the road, so into the, yeah, on the road. So three lines are the zebra skin. Yes, very good. Because guys, those marks on the sign, okay? Um, so they can be called crossroads. No, uh, what are we talking about? Forget that, crossroad is different. Forget, forget, forget. But a zebra crossing, okay? You can call it a zebra crossing. So that's the joke, okay? Obviously, it's not an actual zebra, but they are called zebra crossing, okay? So did you get this fantastically funny joke? Yes, I'm sure you did, and you loved it. <laughs> um, so Rosemary, you said, the donkeys think that if they cross the road, they will be painted like the zebra. Yeah, they will just be smashed on the road as well and be imprinted on, on the actual floor. Good. Very good, guys. So let's move on to our next joke. This one. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but their flag is a huge plus. So what's the, the funny part here? What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know. But their flag is a huge plus. <laughs> so guys, while I wait for your answers, I just want to remind you that I go live on Thursday, every single Thursday at 3 p.m., just like today, and we cover a different topic every time. Just a little reminder, because I know some people don't necessarily get the notifications, so make sure that you do click and press the bell button, which should be maybe somewhere there, or somewhere there, somewhere, it's uh, somewhere around the screen. So make sure that you do press that, um, and that you also share the video to try and reach even more people and have more fun together. Okay, so let's go back. 
Uh, hey, Ravaka, how are you? Yeah, well, you, you, you haven't missed everything. We're getting close to the end, but uh, we just fairly just, well, fairly just started. Sorry, my English is a catastrophe today. Um, but you missed some of it, but we're in the middle of a new category, so you can still stay with us for the rest of the life. So guys, what is, what is funny about this? What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but their flag is a huge plus. So there's two meanings to it's a huge plus. When something is a plus, it can mean different things in this case. So what, it, what do you think? Do you understand the meaning of something being a huge plus? Yes, no. So obviously a huge plus is the symbol that we see directly on the flag. It's a cross. So it looks like the symbol plus, okay, in mathematics. The plus symbol. To add information, to add numbers, we use the plus symbol, okay? But when something is a huge plus, that's an expression. What does that mean if something is a huge plus? It's so annoying the delayed comments because I know you guys are typing right now, but I can't see it yet. So I just have to wait. Wait for your lovely answers of what uh, a huge plus means. No, no ideas, guys? Come on. Come on, guys. Well, if something is a huge plus, it is a huge or a big advantage. It's something positive, something very positive, okay? So obviously the joke here is that, okay, maybe their flag is cool, so it's an advantage, but it's also literally a big plus symbol, okay? Do you get the joke? Do you like it? <laughs> you guys were very silent for this one, so I'm going to assume that you didn't like this one. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Nishan, let me know if you still don't understand because you're just getting, I'm just getting your message now. So hopefully you've understood now. Okay, so let me just repeat one more time. On the flag, we have the symbol plus, And then there's also the idea of if something is a huge plus, it's a huge advantage, a huge benefit. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah, your message are just coming in, guys. No idea. All right, well, I'm just going to move on to the next one, and if you're still confused about it, I'll come back to it, okay? Oh, it's getting so hot again. Oh. Woo. Okay, next one. Oh, you liked it. Thank you, Kader. <laughs> okay, so the next one is... All right. I told my doctor that I broke my arm in two places. She told me to stop going to those places. <laughs> so what does that mean? I told my doctor that I broke my arm in two places. She told me to stop going to those places. So obviously the joke here is related to the word place or places because it has different meanings. Even though it is still the same word, we're not expressing the exact same thing. So in the first sentence, in the gray sentence, I told my doctor that I broke my arm in two places. What does places mean? And in the other sentence, she told me to stop going to those places. What does it mean? Okay, so try to explain the difference between those two words. And then I will explain another expression which is very similar, which is to go places, not go to places, to go places. But first, let's analyze this. Okay, let's see who's first to reply. Any ideas, guys? Come on, put it in the comment section. Write it in the comment section. Give me your answer. Give me your answer. 
All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like find something to do while I wait for your answers. Maybe start a new little song like I did. What do you think? <laughs> what should I do to kill time while I get your answers, guys? Okay, so she was talking about two injuries. I guess that's the first one. Very good. If you break your arm in two places, you basically have two breaks. Okay, so you could have a break here, a break here. So two different um, locations um, that were broken. Good. What about the last one? What's the meaning then of she told me to stop going to those places? Okay, obviously here it's the in as well that can be confusing because she broke her arm in places. It could be on her body itself indicating the location of the, the break. And the other one, which is um, stop going to those places, we're talking about actual physical locations, okay? So those are the two little differences. And I said that I was going to teach you another expression, which is to go places. If you go places, you become very successful. So let's say you know a kid who is extremely smart, um, who's good in school, who studies well, I don't know, who's motivated, dedicated. You can say, that kid's gonna go places. That kid's going places. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Okay? That kid is going to be, that kid is going to become very successful. That's what it means. Okay? Exactly, Rosemary. We're talking about the, the, the break, the location of the arm, not the places where he goes. Very good, exactly. Well done, guys. Uh, exactly, the doctor thought it was places prone to accidents. Okay, good. Good job, guys. Well done. So let's move on to the last one for today. Ta-da! This is a funny one as well. I went to the zoo the other day. There was only one dog in it. It was a Shih Tzu. So here we're actually, l mm, how to explain the joke. Shih Tzu is the breed, it's a type of breed. It's a dog breed. If you don't know what breed is, it's basically race, okay? So a Labrador is a breed, um, a Beagle is a breed. A German Shepherd is another type of breed, okay? So all of those are breeds. So obviously here we have the drawing of a Shih Tzu, okay? But this is similar to an actual expression, which is a shit show. A shit show. So obviously I'm saying a bad word. Ooh! But it is an actual expression. It is colloquial though. It's very informal. So be careful when you use it, it can be quite rude. When you refer to a shit show, you refer to something very bad, a mess, it's horrible, a disaster. Okay, not a natural disaster, just saying that it's crap, it's bad, okay? So when you went to the zoo and you only saw one dog, obviously that was not a good zoo, the whole thing was bad. So it was a shit show, a shit show. Okay, so the joke here is that shit show sounds similar to ch Shih Tzu. I think that's how you say that breed, Shih Tzu. Okay? Yeah, I guess it... <laughs> Thank you, Sergi. And yeah, Mark Kelly, today, yeah, the, today's lesson, is it's real English. It's real English, exactly. It's, it's the English you speak, the English you see in the street, the English you hear on TV. Uh, it's not academical, ac academical, academic English all clean and nice and pretty. This is real stuff, yeah. <laughs> Very colorful language, exactly. But like I said, guys, this expression, okay, can be quite rude. So be very careful. Don't tell someone who organized the party, well, your party was a shit show. Don't say that. You will upset them. You will make them very angry. So do not say that, okay? Um, <laughs> All right, okay, so, Sergi, you have a good example, but um, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's a good example. Okay, good. All right, guys, so, anything else? Any little comments? Anything you'd like to add? 
because this is basically the end of today's lesson. Nishan, English, English jokes are horrible sometimes. Yes, they are, but I think there's horrible jokes in every language. Um, there's uh, different levels of joke, I guess, and another type of very bad joke is dad jokes. Have you heard of dad jokes? They're usually very bad jokes that only dads laugh at. They usually invent them or make the joke and they can spend half an hour just going ha 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 about their own joke. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're very difficult. They're very difficult to, um, to follow sometimes, Nishan. Don't worry. It, is, it, is, it can be quite advanced and quite challenging. That's true. Alright guys, so today we have had a look at spelling mistakes on signs, we have had a look at some riddles and a few illustrated jokes. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, I hope you had fun, um, we've had a very in we had a very intense week last week with um, a live marathon and a video uh, a live every day. Um, so I wanted to do something a little bit more fun, but still slightly focused on being educational. Um, so uh, thank you guys for joining. Please let me know if you would like me to do a new marathon. I was thinking of maybe doing one every month. It probably wouldn't cover weekends though, it would probably be from Monday to Friday. But I think this is something that I would like to do maybe every first week of the month. Um, so let me know if that's something you would like and if you have some uh, topic ideas. I have one or two ideas, but I want to see uh, what you guys feel you really, really need. So please make sure you comment that down below at the same time as you like the lesson and share it. <laughs> Remember guys, the more people we reach, the more people we have during the live and the more fun we have because I can react off your comments and um, it helps me make the lesson more interactive. It's not just me asking questions and giving answers. Um, and again, when you guys make some mistakes, it's also a really good opportunity for me to show you how to correct those mistakes and what you can say instead. So please, please, please guys, like the video, give it a big thumbs up, that will make me so happy. <laughs> and of course, share, share the video. So yes, thank you guys, and yes, in the comment section when we're done, make sure that you write some potential topic ideas that you'd like for marathons. Uh, last time every day was different, but we could focus on a specific topic uh, for the next marathon. I have done a pronunciation marathon in the past, I think it was last year, if not, maybe two years ago, I can't remember. And yeah, it was all focused on pronunciation. So uh, let me know guys, um, what you'd like, how you'd like, how you would like that to be, you know, like what topic, um, even suggest times that you prefer for the live because I try to be flexible and, and do, you know, things that will work for you. So the more you tell me, the more I can try and, and tweak and adapt to your needs, guys. So thank you so much for watching. That's it for today, guys. And of course, keep on learning. Bye bye. And I can't wait to see your suggestions in the comment section. Take care, guys.